I thought I might make a couple of video clips here today regarding the uh, unusual fuel system I have. I know I've made a video before about uh, uh, this fuel system and uh, tried to diagram it on a piece of brown paper, but uh, I thought maybe we'd take a look at some of the actual components of the system. I guess we could start out by saying that uh, using the standard streak tanks and actually the, uh, the original weatherhead valve too. However, uh, as you can see, I've added a bracket over that and uh, that bracket houses a pair of micro switches. Behind the bracket on the shaft for the uh, for the weatherhead valve, I've made a cam, an egg-shaped cam, and attached it to, with a roll pin to the shaft on the valve, so that when I rotate the handle 90 degrees to the left or right, it closes one or the other of those two micro switches. The UL power engines don't have a mechanical fuel pump. Instead, they rely on electric pumps. And I believe these are actually Bosch automotive pumps. But I have two of them plumbed in there, each with its own pre-filter. And they draw fuel from two separate header tanks, which are located where the NACA scoop used to be on the bottom of the, uh, uh, right behind the firewall. And they hold about a gallon or so of fuel each. I've also put in some emergency shutoff valves with a cable that I can yank from the front seat in case of fire uh, to shut off all the fuel supply. Those valves also come, on, come in very handy uh, when it's time to change the, uh, the fuel filters, the pre-filters. Uh, because they shut off a fuel supply right close to the source and uh, there's very little leakage uh, that drips out of the fuel lines and uh, very minimal mess as far as spilled gasoline goes. The fuel pumps then feed uh, up here to a pair of, uh, I believe these are 10 micron filters for uh, filtering the fuel and the, uh, the pre-filters before the pumps are about a hundred microns but anyway this is the output of these two are tied together and a fuel pressure sensor is mounted there at the top these fuel filters then output through one of these red cube uh, fuel uh, measuring gauges I can't think of the right name for them. There's one there, and there's one on the bottom, and the Dynon display then reads the, uh, the difference in flow rate to give you your measured fuel flow. Okay, the second red cube is the return from the fuel injectors that uh, the fuel is not burned, and it returns back through the firewall and goes back to the selector valve up front. So what's happening here is that this return line from the firewall goes back down through the, the center console. And you've got the regular fuel lines that uh, are called out in the plans going to that selector valve. Okay, so get a little closer look here at the selector valve. And you can see the micro switch at the top of the bracket underneath and a bit of the cam on the shaft of the cam's aluminum. So you can see that right in the center of the screen. So um, the selector valve takes fuel that's returned from the fuel injector loop and determines which tank it rotates, uh, or by rotating the handle, it determines which tank 
that excess fuel is returned to, and it actually goes back to the blister, just like uh, on the side under the tank, uh, just like the original plans call for. Now, because of the cam and micro switch, they also are, uh, yeah, the uh, valve handle then also selects which of the two fuel pumps to be running. So that it always is drawing fuel from, uh, say, the left tank and returning excess to the left tank and uh, not overfilling uh, one tank from fuel from another one. Uh, so it, it's locked together in that respect. Now here on the, uh, the top of the instrument panel, I have two buttons marked left pump and right pump and boost underneath. And what these are is switches that are in parallel with the switches on the selector valve. Now these have LED lights in them and the light comes from the power line in the back that goes to the fuel pumps. So when the pumps are activated, the micro switches on the selector valve activated, the relay in the back that, close, that uh, powers that pump closes and when it does it provides power to light the lamp inside this button these uh, left and right pump buttons so I know whether when the light is on that that particular pump is selected and is receiving power now if I've got a dead engine that means the pumps not running for some reason and it may have blown its fuse but at any rate, all I got to do is change the selected tank to the other side. Now, let's say the micro switches go uh, on the selector valve fail. Because these push buttons are wired in parallel, uh, manually selecting uh, the appropriate button here will again cause the pump to be powered. And uh, so that's a safety feature for uh, the case where the micro switches might go bad on the selector valve. Also, you'll notice I've marked them as boost. So during takeoff and landing, when I want the quote unquote boost bump feature, all I got to do is poke both of these buttons at the same time. I don't have to stop and figure out which one's running, even though there's a light telling me. By hitting both of them, because they are redundant as far as the selector valve switches go, it will start the second pump and I'll have both pumps running at uh, critical stages of flight. And then I just poke both of them uh, again when I don't need that. So there, there's my boost feature. So you may ask what happens when you're flying along and it's time to change fuel tanks. After all, you're changing which tank you're taking fuel from but you're also turning a pump on and off and uh, uh, changing everything, filters and all, which I think is a good thing. But uh, I did some extensive ground running testing. And what I found was that when the engine is running at a fast idle or even slower and you change the fuel source, it doesn't even notice. It just keeps on running without a burble. Now, at full throttle, uh, where your fuel consumption is much higher, uh, it will falter for about maybe half a second and picks it up immediately again. Uh, you might lose, oh, I don't know, five to 800 RPM, something like that, but uh, very minimal uh, notice. It, it's just, just a hiccup and then you're back running full power again. And I've done this multiple times, so uh, I don't see it as being a problem. I think it's gonna work out just fine. Okay, that's about it. Thanks for bearing with me. Keep building.